Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a few calibrated microphones. And for those of you who watch the channel, you know that I used to use the mini DSP you make one exclusively in all of my testing. But recently I switched to this, the Dayton Omni Mic V2. Was it worth the change? What's the difference in the mics? And should you change as well? Well, I'm gonna to try to answer some of those questions by reviewing this Dayton Omni Mic here today. First, let's make sure you're aware of what a calibrated microphone is. See, a calibrated microphone is a microphone that is quite simply calibrated to give you a flat frequency response. Now, what that means for audio professionals and speaker builders is it is a microphone that can give you back a measurement of exactly what you are measuring without having to worry if the microphone itself is affecting the frequency response. Now, this is really important for a speaker builder or even someone that just reviews speakers and audio equipment. Actually, even those who are going to EQ your own systems, it's really important. Basically, anytime precise measurements are required, you're going to see the benefit of a calibrated microphone. Now, the two most common microphones used are the Mini DSP UMIC-1 and this Dayton Audio OmniMic. Honestly, both microphones are really good out of the box and they're gonna give you an accurate response curve. Now, the differences are between the software they use to get those responses and to a lesser extent, their build quality. Now, let's first quickly talk about their build quality differences and then I'm gonna get into the software itself. If you look at both microphones, they both really are slick, they have good weight to them, and are made really well. However, the OmniMic does use a USB B port versus the mini USB on the UMIC-1. This may not seem like a big deal, but the USB B gives it a more secure connection without worrying about accidentally bending the USB cable or even damaging the USB port on the microphone itself. But the main difference isn't the USB port, it's actually the frequency response. You see, the UMIC-1 measures from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, while the OmniMic measures all the way down to five hertz while still being able to measure up to 20 kilohertz. Now this is a substantial difference, especially for those of you who are tuning your subwoofers and home theater systems. Because as we know, frequency underneath 20 hertz is considered infrasound and can't be humanly heard. So in order to properly EQ and tune those frequencies, it's going to require a precision instrument like the OmniMic. Okay, let's talk about the software itself. Now, both microphones use free software. Most people who buy the UMIC-1 are going to use a free software called RU. Now, RU is a very good software that can be used with any microphone. That means the OmniMic can, of course, use RU, but it can also use their proprietary software called OmniMic. Now the OmniMic software is free to download, but you do have to have an OmniMic for it to work. Now it is this software that really separates these microphones. Now in order to show you some of the differences, I'm gonna show you this test speaker that I'm working on with Joe and Tal. Now this test speaker, I'm using a Lapai LP210PA plate amplifier, a Tang Band subwoofer, and a Dayton Audio full range speaker. Now, I'm not using any type of crossover. Instead, I wanna rely on the built-in high pass for the full range driver and a variable low pass for the subwoofer. Now with Roo, you would have to run one sweep and get the measurement, but you have a few options with the OmniMic. Now you can still run a sine sweep or even peak noise directly from your computer, or you can use your Hi-Fi CD player to play the included CD. So for those of you who would prefer to use your Hi-Fi CD player to take those measurements, well, you now have that added ability. Now OmniMic notes that you might also be a speaker builder, so it does include some tracks that have the bass and mid-range removed. That's in order to protect the individual drivers when measuring them without a crossover. And even though these are already some neat features, one of my favorite features is the real-time measurement. You see, instead of playing just one sign sweep, it's gonna to continue to play the sign sweep over and over until you stop it. Now the entire time it's playing the sign sweep, it is gonna display real-time information. Why is this important? Well, if you look here, it looks like there's an issue between the crossover of the subwoofer and the full range driver. However, if I disconnect the full range in real time, you're gonna see response change dramatically. In fact, we see that there's not a dip there at all. So the subwoofer seems to be covering that area. If that's the case, why is there a dip? Well, I've been doing this long enough to realize that the subwoofer and full range speaker are actually out of phase. So I need to switch the positive and ground of either my subwoofer or my full range speaker. Now that I've done that, you're gonna see the problem has been fixed. Now that was a very quick and easy fix that we were able to decipher while keeping the speaker playing. Now it's important to note that the sub and speaker were hooked up properly the first time, meaning that both the positive and negative terminals of the drivers were hooked up to the appropriate binding on the amplifier. So if you didn't have a proper measurement, you would think that it was hooked up properly. 
when in case we actually need to reverse the polarity of a speaker to get the response that we wanted. Now this is the reason that you see the face switch on the back of higher end subwoofer amplifier. So we can already see why this is such a powerful tool. But the great part is it even works with crossover design. Let's see what's going to happen when we change where the variable crossover is set. Now we're going to see in real time how it's affecting the response. We can even see the changes as we increase and decrease the volume of the individual drivers. So let's just take a minute to think. Say you're setting up your home theater setup and you want to find the best place for your speakers. With the Omni mic, all you have to do is set up your microphone at your listening position, start the sign sweep, and watch the frequency response change as you move your speaker. Or say you're designing a speaker and you want to see what would happen if you changed out a capacitor or an inductor. Well, this can capture all that information real time. Now, you can even stop it any time you want, save the curve, and add a new curve to it. After making the change, you can later take a more in-depth look at it. Now, you can even turn a speaker on and off axis to see if you're having any issues with diffraction without having to take multiple measurements. Now, some of you might be thinking, Rue can do some real-time measurements as well. It can, but it uses pink noise. Typically, house-sized rooms and automobiles, sine waves are preferred over pink noise. Not only that, the OmniMic software can even do real-time looks at any of the graphs you want to look at. The best part? It automatically changes the right testing track for the graphs you are trying to get measurements for. So it's going to play long sweeps for distortion graphs while playing short sweeps for your response graphs. That's especially good if you're a beginner or maybe just forgetful. Finally, it now comes with not only a test CD, but it also comes with a test DVD. Now this DVD is used to help set up your 5.1 channel home theater setup. This helps you fine tune your delays, EQ your speakers, and of course, set your levels of each speaker individually. But probably my favorite part is the impulse response. Now you're gonna see the impulse response underneath the frequency response graph. Now if we set our real-time measurements to blended and set our impulse response, it's going to help remove in-room reflections. So this basically means it's going to give you a measurement of the speaker and not the room. This is a great way to get an accurate in-room response curve. This is really huge for those of us who don't have an antiquated chamber. Of course, if you want to see your in-room reflections, you can shut that off by switching it to all. Honestly, overall, the program is more intuitive, it's more powerful, and it saves me a lot of time. Now for me as a speaker builder, it has helped me as I, as I can easily make quick, small, fine-tuned adjustments on the crossover network and see if it's helping or hurting my problem areas. Now even setting up my speakers in my living room, it's helped me visualize the response and set the speakers in their best placement. So if you're on the fence of which microphone to get, I would absolutely pay a little bit more to get the Omni mic. Now, should you upgrade, uh, I'm gonna leave that up to you after watching this review. What I will say is that I wish I would have bought the Omni mic in the first place. In fact, I'm going to admit that I switched a while ago, and I'm really glad that I did. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about these products, either the UMIC One or the Omni mic, I did link them both in the description. Now, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, that's all I have for you today, guys. I'll see you next time. One, two, three, toys out! <laughs> that's so dumb. <laughs> I love it. Oh, jeez.